it's me that's talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. <It's> you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to My Guy Reviews, the podcast. Cool, guys. Welcome to My Guy Reviews, the podcast. It's been a while. We're back. I'd like, we? to welcome oh, my guy. <laughs> I'd like to welcome my guy Monkey, you're back. Uh, hi, my guy Brick, how you doing? Yeah, yeah good, man. We've three, three months of this coronavirus um, yeah. has prevented us from doing a lot of these podcasts and doing stuff. But we've still been doing stuff, but just not been putting out content. So we've gone uh, super quiet. Yeah. Um, so we apologize to that one listener. That we've we gone ghost for a while. So uh, sorry <laughs> yes. for that. Yeah. Sorry to the Ooh. listener. Welcome Sorry. back. Yes, <laughs> welcome back. Thank you for listening and subscribing and all that cool jazz. Um, and just tell a friend so we can double our listenership. Yeah. Right? Just literally one person. Just get yeah. them to subscribe. And, and thank you to our listener for, for probably talking on Twitter and uh, all that other stuff and Instagram yes. and, you know, keeping keeping our channel alive while we've been away. Yes, yeah, prompting, prompting us to come back. Finally, we did it. We're back. <laughs> all that love uh, that we've seen so yes so um this week you came up with the topic idea did i really you did you, you took... <laughs> explain to me how i came up with it <laughs> so i i had an idea oh you're you gonna change it, it to, to the other one okay yes you, you my idea yes i did say we'll use your idea because it's a good idea okay. um, and and so um I, I i have got a list but i thought if you want to do the introduction and explain your idea a little and let's let's start with that okay so i, I think we're going to be doing shorter episodes for a little while until yes. things are cleared up um so i take it we're just going to stick to the topic at the moment um and our topic today i think if you if, if i'm correct is um uh, i've just been wondering lately uh, as cinemas are about to open yes their doors again in the uk after three months um, what movies are coming out and what are we looking forward to? Because uh, uh, obviously some of the movies that we're planning on coming out haven't come out. And uh, so they've been delayed or some of them have gone to VOD. Yes, they have, yeah. Um, so that was my idea. Um, you probably, you might have more to talk about about uh, videos on demand than me, though, because I don't use it so much. So Yes. So um, I thought what we'll do is we'll do exactly what you said. We'll go through the, the current slate how excited mm -hmm. preview those films talk about some of the movies that have already dropped to vod which we're going to get a theatrical release yes. um how excited were we about them or not um and in particular we'll talk about one film which i know is going to skip cinema go straight to vod which almost no. made you which yes which almost made you rip up your cinema card so yeah it <laughs> almost went for a refund when i had this <laughs> you couldn't believe it yes um and then uh, and then i've got one more thing that we'll just close up on um, and that is movies with the longest production date. Okay. So as, as obviously things have been delayed, and I thought it would yeah. be quite um, touching to kind of end with movies, not, not movies that got stuck in development help or uh, movies that are like a passion project for someone who sat on it for about 20 years, actually when it started production to when it got completed. So mm. the longest in production. So uh, omitted from that list will still be Avatar 2 because it hasn't been released yet. It will come out next year. And then it could join this list because that's been in, okay. you know, in de in development production for about twelve years. Mm, so that okay. gives you an idea of kind of like what we'll talk about in a bit. So yeah. So should well, we start with the upcoming slate of movies? Um, yeah. Let's, okay. If you got a list, because I've forgotten them already. <laughs> I can only yes. remember. I can remember one that I'm looking really want to see. And that's going straight to VOD. Um, yeah. so, that's, so there's a whole bunch of um, kind of like limited releases. Um, so I won't talk so much about them because I, I, honestly looking at a lot of these um, limited release films and some that have been like Inception is getting re-released. Um, those are not the ones that I'm interested in. I'm talking about the big kind of movies the new ones. that were supposed to come out. So um, we'll start with, I, th I think in July, there's only one movie that I can see that I know anything about. And that's called The Room. Right. So not The Room with Brie Larson, where she won an Academy one. Award. This is a new one. It's, it's a horror film. You know, I love horror films. So, yeah, um, nice. so we, we start with that. Um, and it's due for release um, in July 21st. So my first thing to you is, oh, no, it's going to streaming. Let's ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> so first, it's not going to the cinema. Straight it's not away. even going there. Okay, You've got a miss so the already. First, Okay, so um, uh, we'll talk about another film then. Uh, so the first film that I have to go nationwide so far, that is, 
is going to be on the 31st of July. So first right. question to you, do you think that's going to happen? Based on, in, in, in the UK, we've already started local lockdowns. <laughs> um, there's talk about Bradford, there's other cities that are going to be coming up. And, you know, years from now, it'll become a question, which was the first city to be re-locked down in England? It's a, it's a historical moment. <laughs> no, and <laughs> and, and every, everyone who's part of that city should be super proud of themselves because you're, be, you're, you're part of history now. So, um, so the 31st of July, do you think it's going to happen? A nationwide release of the film. Nationwide? Oh, you mean because... Um, certain unnamed towns might not be a, cities might not be a, uh, yes even, might, even might in, be open. In, so th- this list I've got is the dates in America not the UK dates mm. so it might even affect I know uh, states like Florida have reopened quite quickly uh, coronavirus is quite high down there right now so they could be you know they, they could go, they could go back into local lockdown as well so yes so do you think 31st of July um I'd say no because um, I know that Cineworld already is delaying its its opening until the, the end of the month. Yeah. Um, so you've really got that risk of it not coming, of these things not coming out. So, but, and definitely there's places like Bradford and uh, nearby Midland areas <laughs> that are um, not like that aren't going to be um, welcoming they customers. Might, they might um, come out of it in so say say they start lockdown in a couple of cities today mm. and in the next few days two weeks from now two they weeks. could be opening and then another city elsewhere could be closing down. okay cu- cast your mind back then to um where, our last episode which is where we had what we would be doing for two weeks or was it even That's one right. week? yes and two I, weeks. Was, I think i was already planning for a few months and you <laughs> so <laughs> i was too optimistic yes i know i think you're still too optimistic i don't think it'll be two weeks i think it'll oh. be longer You'll, okay, you'll be stuck in so 31st of July, oh. you're thinking, is not going to happen. But okay, if, if it does happen, the first film that's coming out on the 20, 31st of July is a film called Unhinged. Okay, okay. Um, starts Russell Crowe, um, Gary Bateman, I, Russell Crowe's the main kind of main person in it. It's a film, um, it's an upcoming, it's a thriller. It's about a divorced single mother who becomes, bec- begins to be stalked and tormented by an unstable stranger following a road rage confrontation at a red light oh, so interesting man uh, <laughs> that's such a good film but he's no not invisible. no he's not so Excellent. how excited are you about this new film never heard of it no, no nor have i <laughs> it's got russell crowe oh great i'm i'm out <laughs> so the first nationwide release you're out okay let's keep on to the next one what about okay you? so uh, I don't know. I, again, I haven't seen the trailer or anything. I'm not, I, I just read the synopsis then. Um, I had no, no idea this film was coming out. So cool. it may be quite good. I might not watch a trailer and I'll go straight into it. If this was the first film that my cinema showed, I would, I would go straight into it, I think. Yeah. But Russell Crowe, though. I know, but it's the first film. <laughs> it's, one, it's one of those things, like, to be able to go back into the cinema to experience something again, I think the first few films could be terrible but there's mm. a chance I would watch them. I think the films will come out. They won't be as big opening weekends, but they'll have more legs. If, if the film's good, people will tell people, go watch this film. Um, so obviously we've got driving cinemas open right now. So oh, there's yeah. a possibility of watching it. But I, there's something about sitting on a chair, air conditioning on, eating staley popcorn, having that sticky floor feeling, you know, when you sat so, down, yeah. every time you lift off your foot, they're sticky, 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 knowing that mm. there's gum underneath my chair. You know, I, that's just... Just imagine <laughs> someone it's coughing just... over your shoulder from behind. Yes, and there's a group in the corner just chatting away, there's and you're missing all the good the dialogue. And... Yeah. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> um, but I think we have a different thing. I I tend to go to the late late showings when there's oh, no yeah. children allowed, but then there's more drunks and <laughs> they okay. disrupt them. And you watch it during the day when those people aren't drunk enough, but they bring their children to mm. kick your seats. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's an experience that um, can't be replaced, right? <laughs> it can't, it can't. Okay, so we, we say skip to that one. Uh, the next <laughs> film that's got a nationwide release is for August the 7th, and it's called The Empty Man. So this is a supernatural horror based on a graphic novel. Okay. Uh, and, and the synopsis reads, On the trail of a missing girl, an ex-police officer who witnessed the violent death of his wife and son comes across a secret group 
attempting to summon a terrifying supernatural entity. No one famous. Ooh, I, nice. Would you be interested in this? Yeah, sounds good. So, it like does, doesn't it? Yeah, it does sound <laughs> quite good. I would be down for this. And this is in August. Okay, so we've got our first We Would Watch. Now, in August, there's another movie coming out on August the 7th, which is now not getting the cinematic release, but we'll come back to that when we talk VOD, because that's going straight to streaming. Okay. August the 12th is the big one. It's it's obviously going straight to nationwide cinema. It is, Excellent. of course, Christopher Nolan's Tenant. Now, oh, yeah. do you know anything about this movie, and how, how excited or unexcited are you for this one? Um. All I really know about this movie is that there was a trailer for it in the last, before the last Star Wars movie, yes. and it was and it was quite terrifying for a universal audience. Um, I'm not interested in it. It's not my sort of movie, really. Well, it's a Christopher Nolan film. It's um, it's a, it's all about terrorism and stuff, isn't it? And stuff. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm not going to give away the 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 thing. But there has been another trailer, and yes, there is an element of it. But I, I don't want to. It's one of those films that should be have the little level of mystery, yeah. And you should just go into it not knowing what it is. I mean, I think I know one other thing about it, so I won't say it though. Then. But the main actor, John David Washington, was in uh, Black K. Clint's Clinsman thing, which was the um, Spike Lee film about the KKK clan about a black guy who infiltrates the KK Clay. It's an incredible movie, and he's in this, and he's the lead. And okay. when I saw the trailer and I saw him, I was like, I'm in. Plus, you got Christopher Nolan. I don't need to know anything else about the film. I'm sold. Okay. So I am super excited for this. This, I would say, keep delaying until all cinemas are, you know, at <laughs> least at 80%, 70% capacity, you know, they can open, that is, then mm. release the film. And this could be one of the biggest films of the year. Okay, so you don't want to see empty seats for? I do want to see empty seats, but I don't want to see <laughs> empty cinemas. <laughs> okay. I, I I gotta have my two meter space now. I can't exactly. go to cinema sitting next to it forever. Now. It's never going to change now. Everyone no, needs a two, two meter space. So that's that's for August the twelfth currently. So how excited or non excited are you for this? From uh, from our rating, PS4 or Xbox, where do you put this? Is PS4 good? Yes, obviously we have PS4s. We don't have Xbox. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I I don't like to phase one than the other, but I am PlayStation, Sony, Sony, Sony fanboy. Fanboy, yeah. Um, but you know, wh- whichever console you have, you enjoy the most. Obviously. Exactly. Um, but uh, this one would be Xbox, I guess. Oh, you're not interested. Okay, no, that's your opinion. We're allowed to have our own <laughs> opinions. We are two different people, after all. Even if it's wrong, you're allowed to your own opinion. <laughs> yes, exactly. Even if it's wrong, <laughs> and you're wrong. Um, okay, the next film is literally coming out a couple of days later, and this is Bill and Ted Face the Music. Yes, at last, the film. Bill and Ted 3. Just... Okay, so this, straight away, you showed your cards, PlayStation 4, right? Um, how uh, Do you know, have you seen the trailer? Are you excited no. about You haven't? Think... Good. I'm a, I'm a tip, I'm a tip, I'm the typical viewer that they're that they're trying to get these days, get the money out of. If I see a sequel or a remake, I know what it is already, so I want to see it. Brilliant. You so know, I, I watched the Kathleen. trailer for this, and I think they because they tell you the storyline okay. in the trailer. It kind of I feel like it's going to ruin a little bit, and there's a bit right at the end, a bit like you know, um, Zombie Land Two. Me and you talked about this and how they have the second group that looked exactly like the first group yeah. and they had a set of rules and they show that in the trailer so when you when they come up to that bit in the film you're like oh, I, i've already seen yeah. this so you, don't watch the trailer yeah. do not watch the trailer it looks yeah. quite funny though it looks good i i love bill and ted one and two so yeah i'm really excited for this one as well mm. I'm, i don't know how how um excited i am in the sense of how good it's going to be but i do enjoy the other two and i'd like to see how it goes it could either be a middling or it'll be really good. I don't think it'd be terrible. Brilliant, but that's a PlayStation Four. Um, no, that's, then, a, that's, that's a uh, a Nintendo Wii. No, a, no, a it's you've only got two choices. It's a Switch it's not, it's in the middle. It's not a Switch. <laughs> Come on, make up a game. Zelda: The Breath of the Wild on the Switch. It's got some good things going for it. It's a great game. It's yeah. <laughs> okay, 
That's fine then. You you create your own. <laughs> you just keep changing it as you want. Okay, the next film out the same day is The Secret Garden. It's another adaptation of the British no. um, book, The Secret Garden, no. um, starring a bunch of kids and Colin Firth and Julia Walters. Okay. How excited are you to see children roaming around a secret garden again? Um, I didn't know this was coming, so. <laughs> <laughs> So um, Xbox. I mean, it's a remake, so you know they might have me. That's just to see, that's just to compare. Yeah. Mm. We'll call it Xbox. Xbox, yeah. So so far, so far, so terrible for yourself. Um, yeah. The next big release will be August the twenty. Again, th- these are all subject to change, but it's yeah. Mulan. Mulan. August the twenty-first. I yeah, I, I knew I knew about this one. Um, but I'm, I haven't seen anything about it. I, I take it it's another live action remake. remake yeah. Yes. So I am looking forward to probably avoiding this or watching mm. it and yeah. being very unhappy. <laughs> 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 Wish I was at home still. That's that's what I'm, that's what I'm seeing. Okay. Well, I'm 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 super excited for Mulan. Mm. I love the cartoon. Mushu the Dragon, one of my favourite sidekicks of all time. She's got a cricket, I think she calls Lucky, a great, it's a great female-led story, and she's not princess, she's none of that kind of stuff. She mm-hmm. comes up, um, she puts her, her name in the hat because she knows her father cannot fight a war, and he has no sons, so we'd have to fall to him. And so she takes his place. It's, mm-hmm. it's an incredible, I, I mean, still quite a little bit racist cartoon, but still an amazing cartoon now. Obviously done... Live action, I'm sure the fight sequences and everything will look amazing. I don't know how you'll get the songs in the same manner. Yeah, you might get good songs, they might have, work. Have you not seen any of the uh, remakes so far <laughs> that Disney's done? I haven't seen Cinderella, I have seen Beauty and the Beast. It's pretty much a it's 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 I mean, it's a like for like that was the passable one. I don't think the rest were passable, so I don't see how you could be excited. They're gonna they're gonna tramp, trample on your dreams. I know, but I love Mulan. It's one of my favorites. It's like if they said they're making Emperor's New Groove, Lilo and Stitch. You yeah. got me, man. Give, give, I, you know, I was so excited for Lion King, and then they destroyed my childhood. Exactly. But it's okay. I think you know what this is. This is this is one that I'm gonna enjoy. Definitely. Um, at least they at least they can't um, sort of recast it in a in a in a political weird way. I mean, it's it's already about. It's already got those sex and race issues in it, so exactly. So they can't like, well, they probably can ruin it by just throwing even more in and making it not the film it is. But yeah, there's a potential for it. I can see that. But I'd probably look forward to watching it to see how bad it is. Yeah. <laughs> so that's August, and then there's two films which I'm not sure if you'd be excited about. One's a horror film called Antebell. And uh, Let Him Go is like a drama suspense film with Kevin Costner. Okay. So I don't know if you'd be interested in either of them, but yeah, so uh, the uh, actual horror film I'd be into. Cause that's, uh, that was supposed to come out in April, but um, has been delayed again because obviously a lot of things, but it's it seems like it, it, it could be quite a good kind of film because there's not been many horrors up until kind of like since the delay. We had loads at the start of the year, most of which 90% were rubbish episode for Invisible Man and mm. now you know hopefully this one's quite good again bunch of unknowns yeah um, I think I'll watch that one August the 21st but then you say Kevin Cosner I mean he's yes, he's, he's not been great but he's sort of in his retro stage now he's he, he might be one to watch at the moment okay so here's the premise right. a retired sheriff and his white wife played by Diane Lane uh, fight to rescue their grandson from a dangerous off-grid family Upon the death of their son. A dangerous Ooh. off-grid family. Yeah. That's interesting. They're, they're, someone's trying to vilify the, uh, the, the off-grid people. <laughs> yes. you know, people that are trying to escape society and, you know, li- live free of the system and are being vilified by the cinema that's, and Hollywood. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> great news. So you down uh, for this film? I'd be interested in it. I, yeah. You know, it's, it's one of those ones that I'll... If I get the opportunity to watch it because I've watched all the others that I want to and I'm yeah. I'm, under, I'm I'm out, then I will watch it. And if I don't watch it, I'll probably re- regret it 
after after a while and think oh, I should have seen that when I had the chance. Yes, I think it's going to be one of them. <laughs> um, the, the, the next <laughs> film is a film that spent forever trying to come into cinema and is actually getting its theatrical release. And okay. I don't know which version it's going to be. It's the New Mutants film. So there was a time where where just before Dark Phoenix was supposed to be released, um, 20th Century Fox worked on this um, idea where they'll have uh, the mutants from the X-Men series, but in kind of a horror kind of element. Ooh, nice. Um, where they'll, they, they'll start off and they, in the trailer, it shows that, you know, they capture a mutant, they put them in this facility and then, you know, they, they've locked them up, all these mutants. Like Deadpool. But there's, that starts off with the facility in it. Yes. But in, in this facility, there's another mutant that breaks out and starts killing the mutants one by one, something like that. So it's a, it's a different... Uh-huh. It's still a su- superhero movie. It's an R-rated kind of thing. But it's been one that's been kicking around for a while. There's been tons of reshoots. And it's mm-hmm. finally, if all goes well, getting an August release now. If it's the original, I'm, I'm kind of interested in seeing this because... I do like superhero genre, but I think it's yeah. a slightly different take on it. So I'd be interested in that. The only problem, X-Men characters. It yes. sounds too. It sounds too good to be true. It's like we can imagine it being really good, and therefore they could fail to deliver. It, yes, it's there's a good chance that it's a terrible film, and that's why they had to reshoot it. And then even those reshoots that they didn't like. And all that reshooting means they're probably changing things constantly and turning yes. it into a mess, complete mess with no vision. Exactly. But I'm interested this, in seeing the, just the this result. league. We're looking at you. The thing is, that's why I have a cinema card, right? It's not because <laughs> I want to see, you know, pay to see movies. It's because I want to have already paid and then go and see terrible movies and, exactly. and, not, and not feel bad. Exactly. Sometimes you just want to watch something terrible, yeah. just just purely because you've got something to talk about. You don't want to watch middling films all the time, but they're just fine. You want to watch a really good one or a really bad one. But we don't can, know. Yes, this could this be point, good. So we, this, we, we, this could be this could be the best yeah. could be the best x-men film ever made we don't know yet <laughs> so yes yeah, so where do you rate that um, ps4 or let's, xbox let's give it a sony a sony stamp of approval let's go watch that ps4 oh brilliant the next film coming out the same day is it's kind of a um it's it's a benedict cumberbatch film it's called I mean. the Corey. Exactly. Uh, That's why I came. I came with his name first. Sexy. It's a historical. It's a historical drama uh, called The Courier. It's a true story of a British businessman who helped the CIA penetrate the Soviet Union nuclear program during the Cold War. Mm. Sounds quite good. Sounds okay. I like. The, I, like I like the lead actor. Yes. <laughs> That's all I've got to say about that. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, it, it is going to be. It, I imagine it'd be quite a longish film, but it sounds like, you know, after a while, you've had like not much films in cinema. So this kind of historical drama based on true life story, this kind of film would be, you know, it it will come out, people will talk about it. And I imagine it's one of those that if it, if it's a good film, it will show, it'll have a lot of legs and it'll just keep showing again in the end. People will be watching it week after week. So I think potentially this could be one of the breakouts of the, of the year. Excellent. Okay. So for me, it's, you... a it's, a... <laughs> it's a switch. It's a switch. I'm interested, but it's, it has to be if there's nothing else on that I've watched that I wanted to watch more than this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that moves us into September, September the 4th in particular. Now, there's three films coming out in September the 4th, and I think one film would trample all the other films because okay. it's, it's that good a film. Okay, so the one. first film is something called The Honest Thief. It's an upcoming action thriller starring Liam Neeson. Oh, great. <laughs> Do I need to tell you the, pre- the premise? Well, it's Liam Neeson. It's an action film. Xbox. What more do you want to know? Um, let's see. Someone gets kicked Xbox. out. And, and uh, he's going to yeah. find you and he's going to kill you. It's that simple. Uh, it's, a, film. it's a bank robber tries to turn himself in because he's falling in love and he wants to oh. live an honest life. But when oh. he realises that he that the feds are more corrupt than he is he must fight back to clear his name oh. Liam Neeson but you know what there is Jai Courtney in this one okay. we all know he's rubbish <laughs> <laughs> but it's got Mark Duplass and he's great and I don't know oh. why he's in a film like this um, did you ever watch a film called Creep I don't remember that one though no. no okay so he him and I think it's his brother 
they they made a film called Creep One and Creep Two, um, yeah. and it's it's a found footage film. Basically, in in the thing, he starts off by saying, puts a, uh, an ad on. I think it's um, Gum Tree. Says, oh, basically, I need someone to just document a day of my life because I'm going to pass away, and I want to leave something for my son. So you know, just come, just talk to me for the day, film me, and all cool. that stuff. And he and he just you know starts off, and it's all that cool stuff. And then he starts to go super weird, but it's mm. great. It's such a good film. Good. And, and the sequel is equally good as well. You would just think he's going to do exactly the same thing, but it's not. It's it's very different, but it's so good. Both of them are good. So he's in it, and I really like him. I can't believe he's going to be in this film. So The Honest <laughs> Thief, where do you rate that? Um, I would rate that as, as go and find Creep and Creep 2 by the sounds of it. <laughs> And watch yes. those instead. They're going to be amazing. Yes. Uh, and also so watch Xbox. the first Taken movie and then you never have to watch Liam Neeson again. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> um, so I've, I've, I think that film's going to die anyway. Um, the next film released on that day is a monster film and it shouldn't be released on this date. They need to shift it. And it's called Monster Hunter. Do you oh, well. know much about this? This is Paul W.S. Anderson, the man who brought us the Resident Evil franchise. The man who's behind Mortal Kombat, um, Alien vs. Predator, oh, loads of terrible movies that have made <laughs> money. But some Mortal of them Kombat have... is awesomely terrible, but it's awesome. Yeah, he only did the first one, so he didn't do the second one, which was the worst. Um, he also did uh, Death Race, which was really good. Yeah. I, I, he's, he's, he's kind of like, I think he did uh, Event Horizon as well. So he's my kind of like the um, indie... The B-movie? Movie. Almost. No, you kind of ish in a way because you got you know stuff like a, a Mortal Kombat, but he did Alien vs Predator, Resident Evil, he, um, Death Race, uh, again Resident more Three Musketeers, Pompey. He's in all sorts of kind of random stuff, but nothing yeah. that would kind of solidify him as like a Michael Bay kind of person or kind nothing of nothing great. He's, yeah, but just they're, they're fun movies in a way because they some of them make money. And, you know, I enjoy some of them. That's fun. So, you know, well, as long as I enjoy them. Yes, they are. He he, write, he wrote uh, a ton of stories for things. Like, he, he's, he's got writing credit in, in a bunch of things as well. So he tends to good. direct. Um, so he's he wrote, um, let's see, films that he's wrote that he hasn't directed, because that's quite interesting always. So he wrote, well, that's a Resident Evil film. Mm-hmm. Um, Death Race 2, Death Race 3, okay. Death Race 4. You got writing <laughs> so no, okay. They basically so no, gave him, all that. They just gave him writing credit because yeah, he, he invented yeah. the film, basically. So, yeah. so Monster but, Hunter, based on a video game, have you played it? Um, I haven't played it, but I've heard of it. It's big in Japan, I think, more yeah. than here. Um, I think even maybe PS Plus got it free in Japan. We didn't get it, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes, uh, a few months ago... Um, so sadly, I haven't played it, but it's it's quite an established series, and yeah. I'm up to I'm up to seeing this one. Um, this is a PS4 because it's yes, sir. a video game. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm on the same boat. I, I knew straight away when he was directing it. It was called Monster Hunter. Uh, it's going to be crazy, over the top. Um, but then the star cast, Milo Djokovic, she is Resident Evil. She's in, you know, she, she's done video game stuff before. Okay. Tony Jaa, who I love and always talk about, he did the On Bank film. T.I., the rapper, again, who I love. I love his music as well. Ron Perlman, Megan Good. So it's got great star yeah. cast. Um, but unfortunately, it's coming out on the same day as a film that's going to tr- absolutely destroy it in the box office. And that is a small film by an oh, independent this... director then, yeah. called A Quiet Place 2. Oh, okay. <laughs> John Kerensky's. So, did you watch the first one? Let's start with that. I have, yeah. I've seen that. I saw it, I think I saw it in the cinema. And then I forgot that I saw it. And then I saw it on TV <laughs> as well. I was like, hold on, I've seen this. <laughs> I did go and see it after all. Um, yes. And yeah, it's okay. Okay. You only thought it was okay. I, I and, love and I'm up for the sequel. Yeah, so this had its kind of premiere at. In America, they've got like. Um, South by Southwest, I think it's called, where they do horror movies get um, releases there, and people get to watch the movies beforehand. Um, and so, you know, the, that one came out, and they had um, a lot of people, a lot of buzz was created off of that. And this was supposed to be coming out in 
I think just literally as the the thing was going, you know, as soon as the coronavirus, and it had like a had a feel that this movie was going to surpass the original's opening weekend by quite a big chunk as well. You know, the the buzz and everything was there. People mm. were really excited for it, so it had its it had its kind of like pre-release buzz. And hopefully it can still stay there till September because I really want this to do well because I love John Kerensky. Yeah. Um, he's obviously in uh, The Office and obviously he's he was in, he directed this one and the first one and he was Jack Ryan, so, you know, I love him. But yeah, it's I, I think by the end of the film, the world as they've created, you can have endless stories. There's so many things and so many places you can go to. But if the reviews are good... Yeah. And it follows us. It doesn't matter what it follows. You know, the storyline. As long as it's good, it's got good scares. Yeah. And I love everything. the idea. I love the idea of just having to be silent all the time. Yeah, I, I remember watching the cinema. And people walked out the thing, and they, <laughs> they were like, could, "Could you could you hear anything?" I was like, "Yes, I could. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant." The sound's broken. It's so good. Yeah. It's a great. I remember um, the trailer even more so. Just it was yeah. a very impressive trailer. Just that whole quiet place idea. Love it. Yes. So what what are you thinking? Where are you putting this? Um, this is a PS4, definitely. PS4. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. So this then moves us into September the 11th. There's a film coming out called Two Hearts. I know nothing about it. It's a drama. I'll ignore that. But okay. September the 11th has one of my favourite franchise movies of all time, and that's Conjuring 3. The mm-hmm. Devil Made Me Do It. How wow. excited are you for another Conjuring movie? Uh, I haven't really seen them, so I have to I have to be honest and put myself in the Xbox class for this, or or at least the Switch. No, no, no that's okay. That's or okay. At least, if you, if, at least the it's, Switch. It's your, it's your opinion, you lads. You could be yeah. wrong. I might I might catch up with the series, so that would be Switch area. Yes, so that'd be good. So obviously, Conjuring has spawned a massive. Um, cinematic universe, which includes the three Annabelle films, the movie The Nun, the um, the Curse of La Lorraine, the third Conjuring film. Uh, <laughs> there's talk about uh, I think it's the Crooked Man, maybe or, or a few others. Anyway, there's the it, it's one of the most successful cinematic universes of all time. Yeah. Uh, so this is the third story in the um, the Warren family, who who's based on true life. Because they did the Amityville horror, they investigated that and some other. So they've taken some of the c- cases, and this is what they're turning into movies. So I don't know anything about the third film. I just know the title, <laughs> and I know I know You're it's in. a conjuring film. So I'm in. Yeah, PS4 already. I am PS4 on this one, yeah. But obviously, it's 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 not it's, it's. I think it just comes down to like how excited I am about the franchise <laughs> and how much I love it. So I got a lot of love for that film. So. I mean- I love the horror genre, but I just haven't caught up with all this stuff. We've, we've spoken about this series, and yes. that's how I know about it, which is which means that I could go in potentially and enjoy it, but I feel like I'm missing out on so much background as well. So that's why it ends up in this grey area in the middle. Which is your Nintendo Switch. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the next film is from the the Kingsman franchise. So did you oh, yeah. watch uh, The Kingsman Secret Service? Yes, I've, I've seen them both, I think. Okay, so this, the, the first one, I loved it. Second one, what did you think of? Uh, I can't remember. It was okay, I think. It was rubbish, you're right. <laughs> okay, so, so now they've got a third one out. But this one isn't, isn't a straight sequel. This is actually a prequel. It's called The King's Man. Yeah. Um, and it stars the beautiful Ralph Fiennes, I think. Um, and I th- and I think Matthew Vaughan isn't directing this time because he was going to be doing. Oh no, he is on board. Yeah, so I thought he was. He's doing a film for DC, but he's on board for this one. Yeah, so it's 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 a it's a period action piece. So it's going back in time, and it'll star Ralph Fiennes um, and a whole bunch of other people. But he's the main lead, and it's going to f- feature kind of like how the whole kind of Kingsman came about. Yeah. And kind of like what it is and how they all came about and the whole kind of history of it all. So it sounds quite interesting because I didn't like the last one. So I'm <laughs> hoping I'm hoping he can redeem the series because the first one was really good. Um, mm. And then yeah, the second one wasn't that good. So how excited are you for the Kings of Man? Well, now you've told told me all about it. Xbox. 
<laughs> oh man, poor Matthew. You, poor... you really sold it. I was gonna say it's Matthew Vaughan though. I mean, he's he's still at the helm. So let, let me tell you like how good this guy is. Okay, so he directed Layer Cake. Did he ever watch that? Uh, um, I can't remember. Probably it's got it, it's got Daniel Craig. Um, oh. Then he did Stardust, which you may not have seen. Then you must have seen Kickass, the first of course, one. Of course, yeah, the good one. Yeah. Then he did X Men First Class. Mm. And then he did the Kingsman movies. I think he's really good, but yeah. Maybe he, he also produced. Ready. No, but he produced <laughs> stuff like Lock, Stock, Snatch, Mean Machine, Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. But I think he's always <laughs> done good than well. It's not helping. <laughs> it's not, is it? Okay. Okay, for you, that's an Xbox. Let's move on. Okay. Move on. The next one is one of the most exciting movies of the year for myself. That is September 2015. It is, of course, Candyman. Oh, yes. Okay. So there's, there's a Candyman remake. remake. That's right. So the original, um, thinking back to when it may have come out, but it is a long, long time ago. You stand in front of a mirror of 1992. And if you say his name, uh, Candyman, Candyman, I think you turn off the lights, turn it back on, and then the Candyman would appear and he'd give mm. you a lollipop. Um, nice. that, <laughs> and that was the what premise. Nice it's, I know, he stayed five times in front of a mirror. And you te- I remember um, watching this film when I was really young, but obviously it'd been out a number of years. And it's, there's a, a spoiler alert for a film that's been out quite a while. There's a moment where he spits out all these bees and they're, oh, no. live, they're live bees. They're not CGI. They're yeah. not this fake stuff now. Real bees. And it's just, it's, it's quite scary. Mm. Um, but he also got paid a thousand. He, he put it in his contract, like, I'll do that, but you got to pay me $1,000 every time I get stung by a bee. <laughs> and nice. you got stung, I believe, like 25 times. Wow. That's still, still a lot. That's stinging. a way to make money, though, isn't it? That's the way to do it. <laughs> it is, but you're being stung, aren't you? You're just being stung. 1000 quid for one sting. Yeah, still. Okay, That's so Candyman, re- remake, Candyman remake is written by our good friend Jordan Peele. So how excited are you for this one? Um, I'm looking forward to it. I have to say I, I'm interested in it. I'm, I'm teetering towards a PS4 in interest. And what, what will push you over is if I tell you who's in it, not that it really matters, but the, the, mm-hmm. main, the main lead, um, he, was, he was the Black Manta in Aquaman. And I know you love that film, so I, I won't mention that. But he... No. <laughs> He's, he was the guy in Us. Yeah, I mean the it the it remakes uh, did well, so I just I just need a bit of hyping up with uh, trailers and that. I think I think yeah. they can do that. By so there has been there has been a trailer out, but what I thought might have just excited you enough was knowing that Jordan Peele is producing, writing the screenplay for it. Oh, uh, okay. But if that's not the case, then I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the director of this is this is his first kind of motion picture. He's only done like TV show episodes, so okay. you never know. You never know because a lot it, it can go both ways. But that's mm. Candyman, and where are yeah. you putting Candyman? Let's let's put it in PS4. Yes. Let's see which way it swings when we, when we go watch it. Jordan Peele. <laughs> uh, October the second is the next big nationwide release, and that is a film simply called Wonder Woman 1984. Yes. How excited are you for the next Wonder movie? PS4. This is PS4. PS4 yeah. straight off the bat. Yeah, Paddy Jenkins is back. Yeah, so. I mean, DC have, have had such an unbroken <laughs> record of great movies so far. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hit after hit after hit. Critically acclaimed. Commercially successful. All, all that cool jazz. So I have my misgivings. <laughs> but we will see. We will see. This is one I definitely need to see because, I mean, Wonder Woman was their first good movie for a long time. Yes. So yes, can they hit, hit two for two? I think what they did um, what they did with some of the other films, they signed up their directors for multiple picture deals, mm. but they did do that with Patty Jenkins, and she went away and made Wonder Woman, and then they realised this is their biggest <laughs> film, the biggest yeah. franchise. They realised that too late, and then they're like, okay, we need you for the second, and she... Mm-hmm. then negotiated a bigger wage which is great because she deserves it because she made yeah. your best film in your whole 
DCEU nonsense. You see, there's <laughs> clues here already, though, to it. it could be a flop. Well, could... I don't think so. I think she's such a great pedigree director. Oh. Um, she knows, mm. she knows good, the yeah. subject now. I yeah. think, you know, you've given her the, look, go make her a film. She made a really good one. The third act was rubbish, but up until that point, it was so good. Like, you know, that whole um, that whole uh, bit where you're running through, uh, what's it called? The, um, no, is it No Man's Land? The whole um, World War element to it was yeah. incredible, the way it's done. And all, all kind of making Wonder Woman feel like she's a, she's just a, she's not a sex symbol. She's just this yeah. superhero that people can look up to. And she, she is what Superman yeah. films should have been. This exactly. beacon of life, this yeah. this incredible person that we all as a world look up to, who, who can be held in high esteem. I think she yeah. understood all those elements and she brought that to the screen. And we saw her outfit, colorful, vibrant, saving the world the way Superman should have been doing, saving people. Yeah, exactly. That's what I lo- like about Wonder Woman was that it... The, the character had principles and that was the very point of it yes. rather than the character just being there to look and have powers she had, actually had a human um sort of uh, ideal that we can sort of live up to and by the sounds of it from the trailer um she's got some she's got another sort of moral uh, idea that will be going through the film so i think that's got good promising signs for the for the movie the the thing that would that could go against it is just will they meddle? Will they say, oh, this is one of our successful movies now? We will meddle in your in your masterpiece, and we will tear it apart from the producer side, which I think is probably what happened to all the other movies, but didn't happen to Woman Wonder Woman because they thought, oh, this is just a side project. We're not going to sign anyone up for it. But hopefully, yeah. it, hopefully, it will be uh, left to the people that are making the art to to do it proper. Yeah, because I feel like Justice League is getting a recut, the Snyder Cut. There's a there's a start of the film which is the um, rooftop scene with Batman. I think that's all uh, Zack Snyder. Then there's this action beat for Wonder Woman, and I think that got added in purely because of the success of the very first Wonder Woman film. Mm. They realise that she's marketable. She's credible. <laughs> she is successful. Critically, commercially, everything. We put our eggs in different baskets when we should have been concentrating on this character. Well, they should and have then been they doing added that. Her. And then I think they added those sequences in to try yeah. and make her the predominant character. And it's, you know, you're chopping and changing this terrible movie and you're trying to shorten it. But we'll see how good the original Snyder Cut is when that comes out. So they they should be doing people. that. They should be doing that with all their Justice League characters. They should be making sure they're all solid and, you know, they shouldn't be brushing over any of them if they want to build a franchise and take on Marvel. Yes. <laughs> so this is PlayStation 4 for me. Oh, good. Uh, and then literally the week after is a film called Death on the Nile. All now, right. did, you, did you watch um, the Agatha Christie... Kenneth Brown had directed uh, Murder mm. on the Orient Express. Um, I'm not sure. I've seen quite a lot of things like that. So there's a, there's a new Murder on the Orient Express, which came out in 2017, I think. Okay, had an I hope incredible I seen star that, cast. Yeah. Um, Kenneth Brown had started and starred in it. Um, okay. And it, it has, like, it's it's got Penelope Cruz, William Dafoe, Judy Dench, Johnny Depp, Josh Glad. I think we've spoken about it. Daisy Ridley's in it. Michelle Pfeiffer. Was Hell it good? of a star cast. It's it it's fine. <laughs> it's, it's not it's not great. It's just because there's so many good people, like so many great actors. Everyone's going to mm. get a tiny bit of screen time, and you yeah. have to follow Agatha Christie. So you have to follow Kenneth Branagh. That's and the problem. All, I mean, yeah. the, the story's already there, and they're just going to be doing that story. They can't really focus on all those big names. No. And so they're coming back and it's going to be Death of the Nile. So it's the next book. And he says that at the end of the mm. film of Murder of the Orient Express. I think this kid comes up to him and said, oh, there's, there's been a death. On the and Nile. Has, and yeah, exactly that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so this time around, he's got Gal Gadot's in there. Um, 
then mm. the girl who was in Black Panther, who played Black Panther's daughter, sister, sorry, Letty Wright, Army Hammer, um, Annette Benning, um, mm. some Ali Faisal guy, I'm not sure, John, Tom Bateman. So again, they've gone for this um, huge star cast again. Uh, mm. Jennifer Saunders, Russell Brand. Um, and I think they're going to follow a similar <laughs> thing. Do. Yeah, well, you need a bit of comedy. Uh, I, I don't know. I, didn't, I thought the first one was fine. Mm. But, I mean, a gal's going to be in it. And I think she's the second name in it. So I might, might be thinking it might be good. Mm. Is, go. is the central and, character a good actor, though? Does he do it Kenneth well? Kenneth Branagh. Oh, this is, yeah, this is the thing, right? I never saw the original, so I don't know what, um, what Pyro should be like. Mm. But he's got an annoying accent, <laughs> Kenneth Branagh. And that could be intentional because that's what the character should be. Mm. I don't know. And I just found it a little bit grating. I can imagine. After, after about an hour and a half. I could put up with it for a while, but it just kept going on. What yeah. I'd like to have seen, um, I, I, I know the story's written and it is the way it is, is you have a murder mystery, which is why I think I always say this. Like, you have a good murder mystery. Something happens, someone dies. But there's a clue in the background that we don't notice because it's just blurred out. Or there's mm. this, um, and they do this really well in the first Mission Impossible, where John Renault takes out this little knife, um, and it's the same knife that Tom Cruise finds when um, he is trying to save one of his MI6, MI, MI agents, and he pulls this knife out, which is just it's it's a quick one second, like it's on screen, disappears. But then when he's doing his bit, when he jumps out the air conditioning unit and he's doing that famous scene now you know which which has been parodied hundreds of millions of times and he's taking the thing out of that room and he goes right to the top and john reno is about to grab the thing and the knife falls out of his hand and it lands on the table so that gives you the clue that it was him all along who did the killings i like to see something cool like that so me the mm. viewer can solve it too yeah I, I don't want it so it's like there's a death there's no clues. We're not going to tell mm. you anything about it, but just watch me solve it. Yeah, there's two, two... schools of, of um, mystery, isn't there? There's one where you get the clue, and there's one where just everyone is a suspect, and then at the end, Poirot comes along and talks to all of them and then tells you who it was, and yeah. there was never any clue. <laughs> that's that's it. I just, I just want to see like a snippet of a clue somewhere. It could be in the back shot. Then it makes me want to watch the film a second time. Because then I could be like, oh, I, I missed this. I missed that as well. That was so clever that they did these things. But if they do that, I'm in. If they don't, and it's just he solves it all, and he just tells me by sitting them all down at the very end, I solved it because of this, <laughs> then no, I'm not interested. This yeah. is an Xbox. I mean, is this an Xbox for you then? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think I've seen the trailer for the other one, the first one. Um, and you're right, the uh, acting is very much acting, and that would annoy me, of, of the main character, Poirot. Um, probably just go back and watch watch old episodes of Poirot. It would be easier. Um, or, or watch any, any other Agatha Christie's, really. There's, there's, there's so many good old mystery uh, yeah. series. Um, I do oh. love... I do love them though. I do love old yeah. series. Like uh, what? What other ones are there? There's um, was it Miss Marple? Um, yes, some of Murder the, some She Wrote. Good. There's Murder She Wrote, which is a big famous one. It's Columbo. Columbo. Oh, I Columbo love Columbo. Showed you the start though. He was showed you who died and how they died, and, and then you just <laughs> watch him. Columbo, you always knew who did it because he's always talking to that person. Yeah, constantly. Never, yeah. Never yeah, stops so hounding them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, I do love the, those sort of uh, series. They they tend to be hour long series or sometimes two hour long episodes rather than actually movies. Yeah. Um, but remaking them in movies, we, I'm not sure how well that's going to work. But sounds like. But yeah, Xbox. Brilliant. Okay, so the next one, October 16th. This is the one that I'm looking forward to. Halloween Kills. So the sequel to the Halloween movie that came out a couple of years back? Yeah. Did you watch that Halloween film? I don't think I did. So that so so they've made Halloween years ago, John Coppertons original. They um, remade and it. then and then they no no, they they made a sequel that was called Halloween, which came out um, 
I think uh, a couple of years back now, so maybe 2018. Mm. And it was basically they said, let's ignore all the other Halloween movies. And this is going to be simply the sequel to John Carpenter's original. And mm. so this would be number two. Now, Halloween Kills would therefore be number three in the list. Yeah. And again, it's uh, written by Danny McBride. And he, they did such a good job with the first one. Mm. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. But yourself, you never saw Halloween. How excited are you for another <laughs> Halloween film? You know what the the name is good. It's uh, very kills. much yeah. They just took machete and you know. Yes, that's run, right. I never thought of that. <laughs> machete kills. Oh. Yes. I hope the next one after this is Halloween kills in space. Yes. So, we're still waiting for for machete. <laughs> uh, so this so, is yeah. PS, PS4. PS4. Yeah, PS4. Let's see it. Present them. As, yes. As, as South Park says present them yes um, um the next film out the same weekend is the a movie called the trial of chicago seven so this is based on a true life crime drama um uh, and it stars um, ali g amongst other yeah. people uh, and it's based on the story of the chicago seven so a group of seven defendants charged with the federal government crime of conspiring to incite to riot and other charges to related to anti-vietnamese war uh it's quite a boring film but i'm sure it's really good <laughs> it's important to some americans it's no it will be you know i'm, I'm shitting on it for no reason. <laughs> it's going to be a really good film you know some some of these films that are based on true life events that happened whenever they did they're yeah. actually really really good like um okay. actually world station when they see us now um, so many like biopics that have um, the cover such a an important subject matter is really good. It's just coming to October. I'm in Halloween mode. I'm in fun mode. I don't mm. know if I want to watch it at that point. Uh, it's more of a January film for me. Mm. Wait till it comes out on VOD. Yes, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Three stars already. You haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yes. Um, the, I, I won't watch it in the cinema. I will watch it though. Mm. I think it's going to be a VOD, yeah. Yeah, cool. definitely, definitely Xbox for me. So the, the next film is October twenty third. Now, if this happens, that is because I don't know if it's still scheduled or if they've even yeah. started making it or anything. It's called Snake Eyes. So this is GI Joe. One of the characters in GI Joe is called Snake Eyes. Mm. And it serves as his origin film. Right. How excited would you be to see a G.I. Joe origin film called Snake Eyes? Um, not really. <laughs> not Xbox. Really. <laughs> Xbox, I suppose. Uh, it sounds interesting, though. I'd, ha- I'd have to look into it. If, yeah. it can, if it can get me excited for it, then yeah, maybe. I think once the first trailer drops, I'm I'm kind of on board because I quite like the character Snake Eyes in the GI Joe films. Mm. They are quite bad. Um, he's got a really yeah. really good um, action sequence on the cliff edge when he's fighting against other um, f- people, and they basically are um, par- they're paragliding down, so they've got a rope and they're just kind of jumping down the cliff, and he's fighting against, so they're swinging from rope to rope, but on a cliff edge. It looked great. So hopefully, mm. if it's got more kind of martial arts <laughs> action like that, hand to hand, I mm. think it could be good. If it's CGI mess, then nah. <laughs> what do you think it'll be? <laughs> I think it might be. I think it might be hand to hand combat. That'd I think cool. time, times have changed now. I think people are going back to the kind of old school fighting. I think so. Yeah. People realise that the authentic experience is is actually making something, not just doing it in computers. Yes, so I'm quite I'm quite excited for it. Cool. Are, are you PS4 excited or Switch excited? <laughs> a Switch. <laughs> Hate to say, it, but Switch excited. It's, it's, now now Switch is a thing. <laughs> you, you've accepted it. I have. I have. <laughs> um, the next film I'm really excited about because it's um, from Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. Lord and Miller uh, Lego film. Um, they also worked on Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, so obviously, okay. obviously these two are incredible. Um, they also did 21 and 22 Jump Street, I think. 20, 21 
they directed and 22 maybe they didn't no they directed both so they directed lego movie 21 22 jump street cloudy with a chance of meatballs um right. they've obviously helped with lego batman movie but most importantly obviously they were in spider-man into the spider-verse <laughs> well, so they, yes the one you haven't seen one of the best movies of all time um you haven't seen shame uh, so that they, they, they are producing a film so they're not directing <laughs> but they're heavily involved in a film called connected uh but it's a it's a um animated film okay. a sony animated film it's about kind of like it's i think i think the trailer or the picture i saw was when a dad's sitting down to have dinner with his family they're all sat around playing on their phones all connected in in that manner and okay. he's come up with an idea of let's let's go on this trip and we will try and be connected but without appliances like you know mobile phones and stuff yeah. and see if we can kind of connect in a different kind of the normal way that people used to do back in the day Ring the bell. So for me for me this sounds really good and it's got danny mcbride as a voice as one of the characters so yeah i'm i'm, I'm definitely looking forward for this one i guess something happens when they're out on their adventures to make a story of course <laughs> of course it does and it's got abby um, jacobson as well she's from broad city she's mm. really funny so it's got some really good comedians in in kind of like yeah, olivia coleman's in this as well yeah academy award winner sounds good I'd like to say I'm PS4 on this one, but I know that in reality I'm probably Switch. I I might end up missing it like into the Spider Verse. Yes, I still can't believe and, you missed and, that. And regretting it. So so as much as I'm PS4 on it on the idea, it may be a Switch area. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm PS4 for that one. Uh, the next film coming out on the 30th of October is um, a film starring Hilary Hilary Swank. Uh, Michael Ailey. Now, this guy is the most handsome man you'll ever see. He started in the music video for Halo. Um, he's been in films like Think Like a Man, About Last Night, The Perfect Guy. I mean, uh-huh. the, title, the title says it all. This dude, is, this, this dude is so beautiful, right? Anyway, he's in it and some others. Uh, Mike Coulter, he played, he was in Defenders of Luke Cage. Um, and it's it's an upcoming action thriller. That's all I've got down here for it. But um, knowing that he's in it, I'd be like, what? I'll watch that. And yeah. Hilary Swank, I mean, she's not done a ton of movies, but she did win back-to-back Academy Awards. So, you know, she's a good actress. Hmm. Yeah, sounds good. You know, make a date for it. Yes. <laughs> That's for me. It's a PS4. Excellent. Uh, for me, I have no idea really still on that one. <laughs> I'm going to reserve judgment till I, till it's uh, not on the cinema anymore and it's too late. Okay, so what, what, what's your rating though before we skip on to November releases? Let's just say Xbox. <laughs> okay, that's all right. So I'm right. Not okay, okay, so November the sixth uh, is the release of Black Widow. Do I need to tell you any more about this film? Um. I think it is a Marvel movie. It's the next Marvel movie starring um, Scarlett Johansson's character Natasha what? Romanoff. What 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 are we on to now? This no, we're no longer on phases, are we? Because we've done all four phases. Is it four phases? Three Marvel phases. Universe. Three phases. This, so what? this is start of the phase four. This is Universe Two, isn't it? Is it like so, th- this would be a movie that sits between, I think. Um, follows the events of Captain America Civil War before the Avengers movies. So this yeah. will be in that time piece where Civil Wars happen, everyone yeah. went quiet, then um, Infinity War happened. This but, is her story in between. Yeah. It's not building up towards Infinity War, though, so therefore it's the next phase. Yes. Right? Yes. And it's and it starts yeah. Scarlett Johansson, David um, Harbour, but it's also got Florence... Um, I can't pronounce the name properly, but Florence Pull, Pull or Pug, something like that. And she was in uh, Midsummer. Um, okay. She currently she got an uh, Academy Award nomination for Little Women. She's really good. She was really good in Midsummer. I think we talked about this before. Yeah, the movie's all right, but she was really good in there. <laughs> so she's in it. Um, and then yeah, Rachel Wise, Ray Winston, William Hurt, to name just a few others. So yes, how excited or what rating are you giving Black Widow? Um, 
Well, I'm on, I'm PS4 when it comes to seeing it. I need to I need to keep up with my Marvel universe. So um, yeah, I'll be there. Perfect. Yeah. Um, then there's a film called Clifford the Big Red, which I don't know much about, but it's like a live action CGI. So we'll skip Clifford over that. Clifford the Dog. Do you know Clifford the Dog? Um, I remember the song from it. Yeah. Only, How excited are you to? All I remember is Clifford the Dog. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the PS4 for you. This is <laughs> no. This is put it in your PS4. calendar now. Honestly, <laughs> put it in your calendar. Honestly, don't forget. No, open, open up that phone. Put in November the thirteenth. <laughs> opening day. You need to oh, watch it. It is. It is totally. I mean, come on. It's live action. It's like, like Dora all over again. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. I, I've never, I've never had a bit um, Clifford. So, but okay. That's fine. That's uh, <laughs> November, November the thirteenth. Is is most probably the most anticipated movie of the year. Yeah, Clifford. We've, we've done it. We've confirmed it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the following week, on the other hand, there's a there's two small movies coming out. Uh, a film called No Time to Die, which is the latest James Bond film. Oh, brilliant! How excited are you for the last Daniel Craig outing? I can't wait for it to be over. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can get Idris Elba. Yeah. And we could get. Uh, we could get Emily Blunt. We can yeah. now spin off into all sorts of stuff. Naomi Harris is already part of the Bond franchise, yes. Yeah. Now, I'm actually gonna... see, seeing the trailers. I'm, I am a little bit excited for this one. Yeah, I mean, you know, Daniel Craig, uh, James Bond's are good action films, I have to say. Yeah. I just don't, just don't like him as a Bond, but... Um, or a human being. Or a human being, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, this might be the last male James Bond we get. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully we can go a different we, way. We might, we might get a female James Bond yet. We might get a female black James Bond. Yes. Try and mix up as much as possible. Probably all three things that they could possibly change. Maybe four or five different things. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it. For me, that's PS4 for right stuff. Um, mm. <laughs> uh, probably... I might just wait until it's on the TV. Wow, that's an Xbox. Yeah. But you know, it's big action, so at the same time, you want to see it in the cinema. So, where are you putting this? No rating. Daniel Craigie. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, that's fine. There's no rating. You've, you've kicked, you kicked him to the curb. Uh, then the next film is a film by uh, Pixar Animation Studios called Soul, starring Jamie Foxx. So I love Pixar. They can make anything yeah. and, I, and exactly. I will watch it. And it's yeah. good because it's an original film like Onward. Yeah. Onward, so, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not sure mm-hmm. if, um, if you saw Onward. Did you see it? No, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Onward. <laughs> yeah, I missed that one. Yeah, so it start. Uh, it was voiced by Tom Holland and Chris Pratt. Hell of a star right. cast, right? Uh, it came out earlier this year, and then the corona came along and had it to be released. It. Yeah, oh, nice. basically. It's, it's available on VOD and on Disney's streaming service. It's good. It's really good. Um, so they got another film out this year. It's called Stole. Yeah. Um, so it's about like a, a, a jazz singing, because uh, I, I, I didn't watch the trailer. If it's a Pixar film, I'm not watching the trailer. I'm just watching the film. Cool. That's all we need to know then. His soul I, is about. I just thing. need. I just need to know. You know, it's Pixar. You, could, you, you don't need to tell me anything more about it. I'm watching. Yeah. Uh, this is but a this cinema, one, I'm on board. It. This one actually uh, is a screenplay from um, Mike Jones, who I don't know much about, uh, but Tina Fey is involved in this. So I love Tina Fey. She voices a character mm. in this. It's got obviously got Jamie Fox as well. So yeah, I'm Excellent. I'm super on board for this one. Yeah. PS4. PS4, yeah. PS4 Pro. Uh, <laughs> um, and then it's we're fine. into this. This now we're into December with a couple more big releases and a ton of small ones. So the next big one is December the 11th. It's called Free Guy. It's a movie called Free oh, Guy. Yes. Have you... I can't wait for this one. Ah, oh, straight away, straight off the bat. Yeah. PS4. I don't know if it's going to be good, but I've been tell us what it's to... about then, because you're so excited. Um, what... I, what I vaguely know or remember <laughs> is that it's about an NPC in a video game who 
Um, obviously, he goes through the same routines. He has to die to the main character all the time, yes. that sort of thing. Or I think he's like an average Joe sometimes, just wander around the town, you know, doing the fixed routines. Um, so it's very much about video game stuff, which is why I'm, I like it. The sound of the idea. Um, but uh, one day he sort of breaks free from the programming, I guess, is the source, yes. and becomes the hero. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's video game related. I can't wait. A bit, a bit like Pixels was video game related. And, <laughs> and it turned out to be so people. good, didn't it? And it, uh, but this, was, <laughs> this one stars... Uh, do, you know who's, do you know who's in the film? No. Uh, Ryan Reynolds. I know the one. Ryan Reynolds, yeah. Yes. It's our boy, Ryan <laughs> Reynolds. Yes. Super excited for this. Yes, definitely. I agree with you 100%. Video games is our forte. Movies is our forte. Put the two and together. How can you go wrong? And then with Ryan Reynolds, that's the third trifecta. <laughs> yes, that's the, that is it. Can't go um, wrong with Ryan Reynolds except for his first movies. We don't talk. About. They're all they're all classics. We never talk about anything <laughs> but his classics. Uh, so the director of this film, um, he's done Night of the Museum, The Internship. Uh, Date Night, which I absolutely love. That's such a good film. Chief of I Dozen, the first one, just married. Uh, so it's got kind of a hit miss, but he does good comedy. Yeah. You're putting me so off I, now. Um, <laughs> no, but he's done like Date Night is such a good film. Like, so funny. Internship's got some great laugh out loud moments. Um, Real Steel actually has a touching father son element to it, even though it's about robots bashing each other in. Mm. I think he's the right man for this. Excellent. Okay. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, definitely super excited for this one. Ryan Reynolds, um, I yeah. think it's also got, um, a, yeah, Taito t- Tiki's in it as well. Mm. You know what? I may be looking forward to this movie even more than Clifford the Dog. Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a bold, bold thing to say. <laughs> it might have be on the top for this year's movie. Wow. Um. Okay, so this could be, this could be number one now. Mm, except for you, it's Soul. It, it, I mean, um, I'll, I'll go through the list again. I think it is, yeah. I don't think there'll be another film better than that. Okay, so the next film, as you talk about how excited we are about Free Guy, is a movie I think you're excited about. It's called West Side Story. Is that like the musical? <laughs> it's the musical, and yes. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, yeah there's, there's, three, there's three films coming out <laughs> on the same day. And from the three, I think you're going to be down for West Side Story over the other two. Compared to what other two? Coming to America 2, which I'm super excited about. Oh, okay. and, the, and the other one is a film that I don't think you have any interest in. It's called Dune. <laughs> <laughs> I know you hate, you hate Dune. <laughs> to be fair, I, didn't, I haven't really watched the original properly, but I'm really interested in the remake. I know, you're really excited. This, this was your big film of the year. <laughs> until until you heard Ryan Reynolds was in Free Guy. Yeah, and then it all got cancelled. I mean, I'm not overly excited, but I, would, I definitely it definitely got me pegged with that West Side Story stuff. I mean, <laughs> it's going to be great, West Side. So it's coming out just before Christmas, similar time to Greatest Showman came out. Um, yeah. A couple of movies, um, kind of movies like that. Um, I'm just thinking there was another film, not La, maybe La La Land as well. So that's the. It's kind of like the right time. Yeah. Christmassy time to have that sort of film come out. I've heard. I've, I think a good review would be almost as good as Cats. <laughs> oh, yeah, Cats <laughs> came out this year. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I haven't seen that. I know people shit on it. Me neither. Um, I I expected it to be CGI Cats. I don't know why people were moaning about it, but I have to watch no. it. Um, I've actually seen a pretty in-depth review which explains why um, people were very put off by it, but it make, intrigues me actually. It, I think it, they really did make a terrible job of it by the sound of it, but yeah. it's in such a weird way that I actually want to see it now. I want to see Cats. I do too. Yeah, exactly. So um, so from the three, Dune, Coming to America, West Side Story, what's your rating on each one? Uh, I mean, Coming to America, that's that's a long-awaited sequel. Wow. Yes. Um, Arsenio Hall's back. Eddie Murphy is back. Oh, you know Tracy what that's, Morgan, that's Leslie Jones, you know uh, Leslie Jones from um, uh, Ghostbusters. Oh right, she's in it as well. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yes, definitely. 
definitely <laughs> one of those three. So which one's the Xbox, which one's the PlayStation 4, and which one's the Switch out of those three? Ah, you know that there is one of each, really, isn't there? So Yes. Um, which order shall I do them in? <laughs> Any order. Okay. So, well, then Xbox, I think, is the West Side Story. Okay. Oh. Not interested. Um, Dune is the Switch. I'm interested to see it, to see how, see if it's good. Um, but coming to America too sounds epic. Yeah. That's, that's the PS4. Brilliant. Yeah. I kind, of, I kind of agree with you, but I think West Side Story might be one of those breakout hit films of the year. Yeah. Of, of the season, of the season, not the year. All the that La La Land and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Or it could go down the cat's route. You're right. I, don't I know. think it's a cat's route, but. <laughs> And then just before Christmas Day, on the 23rd, two yeah. films, um, both sequels, The Crods, The Crods. Did you ever see The Crods, number one? I don't the think Crods so. The Crods 2. So this um, was voiced by Nicolas Cage, the man who used to be, like, nice. untouchable. Like, we used to love yeah. him. Ever. He used to be in so many great things. I hated him then, but now I love him. <laughs> he is the star <laughs> of Indy now. Brilliant. He is, isn't he? Um, anyway, it's still voiced by him. Um he plays the dad, um, and then yeah. Emma Stone plays, I think she plays his daughter or his kid, mm. one of the I two. I might have uh, seen so this, actually. I might have it's seen a it pre- prehistoric film. Yeah. They're kind of like cave people. Mm. Um, and, I remember but look, look, so, let's, so let's just walk through who's in it. Nicolas Cage, Emma Stone, Ryan Reynolds, right? Leslie Mann. Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is back. He's got two yeah. films. And Peter Dinklage is in this as well. It's got a really good voice star cast again. Um, mm. I quite like the first one. I'd have to hate to say it. I did like it. It's quite funny. So yeah. I, I, this, this is I would watch. But if someone said you can only watch one computer animated film of the year, it won't mm. be this one. But I am quite interested in this one. But where do yeah. you stand? I mean, it was... It, I, uh, as far as I remember, it was a good movie. A bit, uh, some heartwarming values to it as well. Yeah. And the cast sounds good. Would I watch it on what is it, Christmas Day, Christmas Eve? Just twenty third, yeah, just before Christmas Day. Just before Christmas Eve. Um, I don't know if I'd watch it then, but maybe in January would be one to watch. So where would you put this though? I think it's pretty, switch. Oh, it's definitely a switch in January. It's not something I would jump to watch. Okay, I think for me this is PS4, but that's fine. Mm. The <laughs> next movie, <laughs> the next movie is a long-awaited sequel. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to, if I was to guess, the the original came out in '86. The sequel mm. is now coming out in 2020. Um, I think a lot of the original star cast is back. Um, and it's going to star Miles Teller, Jennifer Connelly, John Hamm, this beautiful man, Glenn Powell, Lewis Pullman, Ed Harris, and Val Kilmer. What is this movie? No idea. And a small actor, indie actor called Tom Cruise playing Maverick. Tom Cruise playing Maverick? Yes. Is it Forrest Gump 2? It is. <laughs> He feels the need, the need for oh, speed. Cool. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the sequel. Are you interested in this, personally? Top Gun 2. Top Gun 2. Um, I mean, it sounds like a bit of fun. It could, yeah. You know, yeah. So I'm interested in it for that for that aspect, but I'm, I'm not really interested in, in Top Gun in general. So, did you do you remember the original? Do you remember loving it or liking it or hating it or thinking it's all right? uh, disinterested in it, really? Yeah, I'm sure I've seen it many times, but never really remember it. It's not so like this... Cocktail, you know. That's more memorable. Oh, yes, <laughs> but that and Color of Money. There we go. So we've got some better ones already. Yes, Risky Business, where he's just running around the house with his shorts on, there his underwears. Go. So many great films, so many iconic things he's done in his lifetime. He's hung off an aeroplane. I mean, once you've done that, I mean, what's there left to do? You've you climbed the, the tallest the mountain, t- tallest mountain in the, the tallest building in the world, right? And he was hanging off the edge of that. 
Mm. I mean, he needs Tom Cruise. He can do anything. Yeah, you um, have to say one thing for it is Tom Cruise does pull the stops out when when he's involved in a film. So that yeah. could be in this in the film's favour, definitely the sequel. Yeah. So Nintendo Switch then. <laughs> yeah. Switch. <laughs> Um, and, that, and then, that's all of 2020, or is that? That is, yeah. And th- there's a film on Christmas Day, but it's called News of the World, which is like a Western drama. Uh, directed P- Paul Greengrass. He did one of the um, Bourne films, but it stars Tom Hanks. No, it's is he a, it's a Western? Yeah, Western drama. Sounds good. I'm, I'm liking the Westerns. Yeah, um, okay. <laughs> Christmas Day, I'll be Christmas there. Day, though, yeah. Okay, oh, wow, so that's gone straight to PS4. It's nah, fine. switch, switch. At least, maybe so, Xbox. Um, due, due to the coronavirus, a whole heap of movies moved straight to DVD, or straight to VOD, yeah. sorry. Trolls 2 was one of them. Um, that grossed like $100 million in I VOD. See, I didn't even get to see Trolls, I missed it. No, when, well, Trolls 1 is fine. But they made a second one. Anyway, it, yeah. it's, it did really well. So um, some movies are following that suit and some are being purchased by streaming services like My Spy, uh, which is really good. It's quite funny. It's got Dave Baptista, um, a movie called yeah. Lovebirds. Don't watch the trailer. Watch the film. So funny. Uh, two incredible leads. Very, very funny. Um, and a whole bunch of other movies are coming across. And I think the one we want to talk about that coming straight to VOD is the one yeah. that made you almost destroy your whole... Um, cinema uh, pants and that's Spongebob Squarepants yeah how can that school? go to VOD I've, I've watched all the movies in the cinema so far yes so um, them. so they they, <laughs> they watched they watched what they did with Trolls and Trolls became very successful um, mm. and you know it broke a bunch of kind of like digital demand records and stuff by skipping the theatrical release it works out a bit cheaper I imagine and therefore yeah. they, they created enough buzz but it was at the start of the pandemic the start of the exactly. we're closing everything down so it could be just the lining in the bottle yeah that's so all they, they want to follow do. suit yeah but at the same time i mean it's almost like going back to the old straight straight to uh video sequels yes so maybe it is a good a good model that works especially if you don't have as strong a sequel as the previous film then it might be a good idea just to put it to vod yeah, it's an inexpensive way to get your film out. The, the new Tom Hanks film's going straight there, not the one that we just spoke about. There's another one in between that's going straight there. Um, Kevin Bacon's new horror movie went straight to VOD. Um, so, yes, yeah, so there's some big movies. In um, There's a Disney film called Artemis Flow. That was supposed to be a franchise star based on these big novel books. That went straight to Disney streaming. Actually got rubbish reviews anyway, so it didn't really matter. <laughs> they would have lost. They would have lost a ton of movie money on there. Yeah, the but it's a Scooby Doo film. If they yeah. put it on the cinema, though, it gives it a little bit more weighting. Like people might yeah, yeah. rate it slightly higher. You know, you they, lose they a lot of money guess. though. Yeah, because you imagine like you still got to pay for all the advertising, the marketing. So if if you're talking about a hundred million dollar film, you might pump a similar amount into just marketing. So now your movie needs to make three hundred or four hundred million to break even. Well, they need to print some posters at least. <laughs> yeah, this, this thing, you just chuck it on your streaming service. What more do they pay for for marketing? Get to get well, cut out in t- cinema. TV, well. TV adverts. You got yeah, radio yeah. adverts. You're flying people out to YouTube do interviews. Adverts. YouTube adverts. It's 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 an expensive kind of rollout. Yes. So yes. I can see why you you could drop it. So the new Scooby Doo film's going straight to. Um, a video on demand as well yeah. skipping the theatrical release but that doesn't really decide whether it's in the cinema or vod at the end of the day if you the more you market it the more money it's going to make not necessarily wherever you put it, wherever you put it. yes necessarily always no. if you don't put the money in you're not going to make the money out no because look at um, john carpenter um not john carpenter um was it uh that there's a disney disney do this a lot like disney chucked a lot of money at some of their releases last year look at dumbo yeah, uh, Mary Mary Poppins. People still went to see it last Christmas. they found but, out how bad it was. Exactly. So <laughs> you know they chucked a ton of money at it, but they didn't come back with money. They lost a ton of money on those films. Good. They deserve uh, to lose money on the dumb <laughs> uh, One really good film again that missed um, a cinematic release in all of this uh, was The Five Bloods. 
have you seen this yet? This is on Netflix. Yeah. It's this new Spike Lee film. It's incredible. It is so good. It follows like four black Vietnamese veterans who return to the country to cover the body of their former squad leader. Uh, and it stars, um, I think it's, it's, it's got an incredible star cast, but it's so good. Like, so sometimes, you know, you could dump a film onto a streaming platform, but it's actually a really good film. Mm. It doesn't always need a cinematic release. So it's, it doesn't, it does... Yeah, it takes away those costs. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Exactly. Yeah, it does. And, you know, a film like that might have more legs in VOD um, streaming service than it would have done in cinema. Anyway. More people might get to watch it. Yeah. We well, don't have to send out prints of it or anything like that. It's all just put it in one place and everyone downloads it or millions all over the world. So. Yeah, because we're, we're, we're talking about releases and tons of delays. I thought we'll just quickly end off with one last thing. So normally films can take months, a year or so to make whatever. Uh, movies yeah. like Paranormal Activity can be turned around in a couple of weeks. It's just found footage. So I thought let's talk about some of the longest movies that have spent time in production. See if you know the name. And if you if you think it was worth the wait or not. Okay. Okay, so the first film on the list coming in at number fifteen is four years and is a movie called Movie Forty Three. Do you oh. remember this film? Um Did you watch it? No, I haven't seen it, no. It's just got a whole bunch of like A list stars like Hugh Jackman's in it, um, mm. loads of other kind of very famous Halle Berry, I think. Um inc- famous, famous people. Um and they just do outrageous random things and it's almost like a skit 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 and it keeps jumping between things um to try and get everyone schedules and kind of like do all of that and they had multiple directors that's why it took so long the film was a failure <laughs> commercially and critically so yeah it wasn't really worth the four <laughs> years we could do an old whole episode on this if you've got 15 of them um, most of these I've not heard of, so we'll skip through a, a bunch of them. That's why. Uh, the next one uh, is The Fall, which again took four years. I know nothing about this film, but mm. I will skip on. Now, 1930s Hell, Age, Hell Angels. Um, and the reason why this one took so long, it was just there, it's shooting stuff in the air, like because they're doing these amazing like fighting sequences of airplanes. It took over for, like five, three years to shoot. Oh, okay. And then three, and then you know you got to do reshoots and stuff like that. So it took a large period of time based on that. Actually, um, I can't see many people saying terrible things about it. It seems like it was a good film. But I haven't seen it. They put um, in all that effort then. It's... It was groundbreaking at the time, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, and the next film was five years. It's called Samara. Uh, it's a non-narrative documentary. Again, I don't know anything about it, so we'll just skip ahead. Uh, the next one was 20 Tours Every Day. So it's a British film uh, revolves around convicted drug smugglers. Mm. And it was such an incredibly, like, such a long time. It took them five years to shoot that film. Why? Do you know uh, why? No. Just because <laughs> they were just filming small segments at a time. I don't know why. Yeah. It's just and it, it, it's just one of those things. It, it, it's not clear as to why. Um, and the next one, um, you may or may not have heard it called Eraserhead. This is considered to be one of David Lynch's finest fi- uh, films and mm. a game changer in horror genre. Right. Uh, but it took five years to make. Um, he utterly just he dedicated his time to make it. it. It had extensive reshoots, extended shots and delays in schedules and stuff. And it just took him forever to kind of make the film. Yeah. I mean, if you're getting paid for it. I'm just exactly, imagine being, yeah. Imagine being one of those people on the sets, though, like. Five years, Five where, years, I know. Uh, Keep going back to the same thing. Uh, the next one you may have heard of is 1979's Apocalypse Now. Okay, yeah. So this is, okay. everyone talks about it. It's like maybe one of the best kind of like um, war films of its generation. Mm. Um, it was, I think it's Francis Ford <coughs> Coppola. Yeah, Francis Ford Coppola's film. Um, and the budget was just crazy. It took over four and a bit years to, to do. So you imagine like keep going back to the same place in Vietnam or wherever it is, shooting a war film. It's taking years to do. Um, mm-hmm. But, it, you know, it's a great film. Everyone talks about how widely loved it is still. Yeah. But it takes a large chunk of your life away. You, know, you <coughs> get Martin Sheen, Marlon Brando, hell of a star cast. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> number eight, a film that um, some people say caused the death of a director, Stanley Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut. Have you seen this? Um, I think I've seen some of it. 
I never remember, but I think I probably have seen it, yeah. Uh, so it took like over four years, constant script changes, extended shoots, long production. Uh, the film was also recognized as having the longest continuous shot, mm. um, took, which took Kubrick 15 months just to do that one shot. That's Kubrick for you. That's, uh, uh, yeah, and sure. obviously working with him was really challenging for the actors because they both then filed for divorce after this film. Oh. Um, and obviously Stanley Kubrick passed away after shortly after this film as well so it must have been a hell of a film to make, it wasn't that good <laughs> <laughs> compared to the rest of his, his uh, yeah that's the problem right Yeah. kind of strange isn't it it's an odd one out but... so there's, then there was a film um, called Perspective this came out in 2020 mm. um, so this came out now it's, it's about a love triangle but it's spread over what they say nine chapters and each chapter was filmed in consecutive years. So the first one was shot in 2012. Wow. The next chapter would be 2013. The next chapter, well, like that. So it's like over the course game. of... Uh, kind of, yeah. It's, it sounds like a really interesting premise because there's a film lower down the project, which I, I love the idea of. Mm. Uh, but they said the director had lost interest in 1997 and abandoned the project. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so, you know, only five years in. And so it's taken so long to get complete because they couldn't find someone else to take over. Yeah, they wanted to finish it. Wow. Yeah. So that's crazy. Um, obviously, number six, 2009's Avatar. So this, um, the reason why <laughs> Avatar 2 is not on the list because it hasn't been made yet, but Avatar mm. took 10 years to produce. Wow. So, you know, developing the script, making the technology right, doing that 3D stuff, just patiently waiting for the right time for it to all be available mm. and then shooting it and, you know, doing all that stuff. So nine years to make, at the time, the highest grossing film of all time. Not worth it. <laughs> it's a waste of time, right? <laughs> uh, I'm then not like it, but I don't... You, you hated it. Waste. Then there's a, there's a 1960s film called... Mowgli, Mowgli Azam so that's a Bollywood film by the looks of things and it took them 10 years to complete from start to finish with almost the entire star cast having to re- revisit all the shooting again wow. so they made it and they're doing reshoots and then they had to go back and film the whole thing why? what happened? because they just didn't like it I imagine and then you know they uh, after a whole lot of editing and removing certain songs the film still ran for 197 minutes Oh, I mean, that it's got kind of a cult status to it. Sounds of it. Yes, it does. Yes, it, yeah. yeah. Worth, so worth, worth seeing. So the movie that I do know and I have seen and I wanted it to be so much better is a film called Boyhood. Right. Did you ever watch this film? Rif- Richard Lank- Lankata. I'm not sure if I have. Um, he did like the After and after Sunset Before Midnight trilogy. Um, it was based around a child and he's going to film the kid for one month every year for 12 years. So yeah. we, as a viewer, got to watch this child grow up on screen. And they mm. picked a kid, and he'd go and film. Then they'd do something else for a year, come back, film, yeah. go do something else, come back, film. And, you know, you've got this idea where the, ch- the child or his parents could have pulled the project at any point. Yeah. Actors could have been disinterested in the film. But yeah. actually, it all came together, and you can see That's him good. grow older. You can see his family falling apart around him but uh, it, it, could, it could have just done with a better story something this, could have happened to the world is this documentary style no, again, it's an actual, it? no it's an actual movie it's actual actually, story yeah but it's an incredible idea like to go back to yeah. film something for the next 12 years to commit to it this is how i'm going to make my film every yeah. every year we're going to film but this at the same time if it's not a documentary then why bother like Part of part of making movies is is creating the magic synthetically, so you get different actors to do different stages of their life. Well, this this, they... this this adds to that element where you've got a child, at you know when yeah. I think he was like ten or something. Um, I, I think we see him all the way up to he hits um, university 22. age or something like that because it's called boyhood, yeah. so it's when he's boy. But then you watch him the following year, then you watch him the year up. You're watching him grow. Yeah, literally in this hour, two hour film, whatever it was. Mm. And I think uh, there isn't anything like this that's ever happened in cinema that I'm aware of, where it's the whole purpose is we would shoot, let's say, February every year for the next 12 years. And I've mapped out how it's going to look. 
and then Ethan Hawke turns up because he's in the film. Um, can't mm -hmm. remember who the female lead is, but she was quite famous as well. And, you know, they come, they commit their time, they shoot, they're done. But the film's not out yet. Come back, they commit their time, shoot. So like all, the act, all the actors are aging a year each Everyone, time. yeah. The, everyone. It's such a great idea. It was, it was one of the best ideas I've seen committed to cinema. Mm. The film just lacked a little something. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that you can dream of, but you need a lot of preparation time yeah. to actually get finished and done. So, And it's not like you can go back and do reshoots when you've decided to change your mind, <laughs> no, come up with an improved idea. Well, let's put an alien in, the, in when he was born. Oh, it's too late. But you could put an alien in the following year. Yeah. You could but... then, so say you, 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 you've made three years of your life <laughs> and you're like, oh, it'd be good if we could introduce a, a, a virus outbreak. In... Now imagine that if every year they're like, oh, I'm bored of it. Let's, let's mix things up and <laughs> can imagine incredible. what you come up with by the end. Yes. That's what yes. they need to look out for, for their next version, their sequel. <laughs> yes. It's the same thing. Uh, so that's 12 years, but that was intentional. Mm. Um, another Bollywood film that took like 16 years to produce okay. um, called Pakiza. So that's like another um, uh, half the project was finished in 1964. Uh, and then I think a bunch wow. of people, they separated. Uh, so the project, okay, so a married couple were in the film and they separated. So the film stopped <laughs> for five years until fellow actors could get back together and work oh. on the project. Same. Oh, did they get Life. married or did they just no they just to the point where they could they could, they could stand up. each other again yeah. yeah that's reality for you isn't it yeah uh the next one is a film in 1954 called uh Teichland. um i think that's a uh, propaganda film so i won't even talk about that one and then the last one is a f animated film that took a whopping 28 years to make okay uh, so the pro uh, project started in 1964, but due to insufficient funding, um, and they only filmed a few scenes at the lead as a slow production. So, however, after he worked on success, so oh, I see what it happened. So, basically, this guy went away, starts making this film, ran out of funding, so stopped the film making, mm. went away, worked on some successful films like an indie flick called Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So people were oh. like, oh, you're good now. Let's give you some money. So it goes <laughs> back to the original idea. Uh, and then, you know, he slowly starts to work on it. And it takes 28 years to complete his production. Mm. And it turns out it's a pretty average film. <laughs> <laughs> got that. it done. Yes. What and that's the longest. Uh, it's called, uh, what was it called again? Oh, yeah, The Thief and the Cobbler. Oh, okay. 28 years. What year was it released in? I never knew how it. Nineteen ninety-three. Oh, that's a bad time to release. <laughs> he should have saved it another ten years. Yes. So yeah, so that that that's that's the longest things in development. Now that most of these films could be set in development hell forever. Yeah, when you were talking about the animated, I was trying to think of a of a, of a film that spent that we've spoken about on this channel that took a long time to get to something you could release. I can't remember which one it was, though. Um, Frozen, I think we talked about. Yeah, Frozen, that's what it was, yeah. yeah but I think what they mean by production is when they've actually started yeah. filming a scene. Rather than just trying start, to write it. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, you can have movies, could like um, the Superman lives in the Superman series have just had tons of rewrites. and But it's mm. from the, pro the point where it started production to when it's completed and been released. That's mm. what we're looking at. Mm. Fascinating. So, so we've got one movie to watch out of that. Was it Mowgli? <laughs> That's the cult classic <laughs> one, yeah. The cult classic. They're all cult classics. Maybe the cobbler <laughs> and the thief, or whatever. There is, is uh, and an honourable mention. There's a film called Raw, which is about a film which um, is about um, a family who moved to I think it's Africa, and they're they're in like a game park, and they in real life have to. They're acting against real lions, tigers, real animals, basically. Yeah. And the animals at some point have attacked the actors and they've wow. had to halt production. And I think that took seven years to make. Um, so that's that's another. <laughs> so that, that's going to go down as a cult classic because that's a movie that was just. There was genuine yeah. injury. Especially if you can get the version. Peril. 
especially if you can get the cut where where they've left the it a bit. Cut. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> actual injury, saying exactly. goodbye to the actors. Yes, <laughs> brilliant. Um, so that's our that's our podcast for today. Yeah. Still, turned out to be quite a meaty podcast. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, we could have done an entire episode on that. Um, I think we, I think we need to work on getting it down to an hour, single yes. small snippets of things, so that we can produce a, a few more in these troubling times of the, yes. of the adverts keep fresh saying annoyingly. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, how can they contact us? Uh, you know how they could contact us. Let them know. We've got Instagram, we've got Twitter. Yes. All, all those things. Got email. Uh, and I'm starting to check those a bit more as well. So, oh, um, about time. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, get, well, get in touch. Let us know what we should be doing differently, yes. <laughs> better. Whatever yeah, if there's any topic ideas you guys got out there, um, I think we've got a couple more. We'll, we'll keep them quite short for the next few ones. But yeah, if you guys got any other topic ideas that you want us to cover, look at. We'll be happy to look at that as well in the next few weeks. Yeah, cool. Well, as good always, to... subscribe, tell a friend, <laughs> write a comment. We only like five stars, but that's it's up to you. <laughs> Put that wherever you want. Subscribe, like, tell a friend. And yeah, all that stuff. But most of all, just uh, come back and watch again if you feel like it, or listen again. Yes, and thanks for listening. Adios. Cheerio. No, it's me that's talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> you, you, yeah. <laughs> My guy reviews the podcasts.